The following presentation is from St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Oakland, Maryland. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Shay James, and I am the annual conference director for Youth and Outdoor Ministries. It's an honor to be with you today. I've been in Garrett County this weekend doing some youth training um, in the northern part of the county, wherever Mount Zion United Methodist Church is. That's where I was. And then I was here yesterday afternoon, and it's an honor and a privilege to be with you this morning and to get to share um, and worship with you. Um, the good news for you this morning is that I'm a short preacher. I'm only five foot tall, and I usually only preach for about 15 minutes. So, so we'll get through this together. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the blessing of being in your church this morning. God, we pray that as we gather in this place, we might hear what you have to say to us today. So open our hearts and our minds and our ears that we might hear your word. And we pray this in the name of Christ, who is our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know about anyone else gathered in church this morning, but I'm not great with directions, especially the kind of directions that involve legitimate road names and the navigational routes. For instance, 68, that runs like west and east, right? I think like the even numbers go one way, the odd numbers go another. And so when you give me directions and you say, take 32 west until you take 77 north and you're gonna get on 55 north and then you'll be on County Road 2, you might as well be speaking Dutch to me and I don't speak Dutch, okay? It's not a pretty picture. Directions are hard. I am from rural Appalachia. My kind of directions involve, you go out to the old McKibben farm and you turn right then there's a tree that was hit by lightning. You turn left at the tree that was hit by lightning. You're going to find a field with a cow in it, because there was a cow in it yesterday. You turn left at the field with the cow in it. Those are the kind of directions that I understand. This morning, I invite you to turn and share with a neighbor a time when you didn't understand directions. But before you do that, I want to encourage you not to throw your spouse under the bus when you share this moment when you were confused about directions. So take a moment, turn to your neighbor, and let them know a time when you were lost or when you misheard some directions. I can tell from the amount of laughter in church this morning, some of you went ahead and threw your spouse under the bus, didn't you? <laughs> you did, you did. I'll also tell you that this morning, uh, when, I was, when a couple was leaving worship, they told me, my husband is great with directions, he never gets lost, I always get lost. So I was excited to hear about a time when he'd been lost, and he turned to me and he said, I was lost until I found you. <laughs> I can't make this up. This church is amazing. <laughs> the passage that we read this morning involves some pretty specific directions from Jesus. Go into a village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with them. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Do you know what I like about Jesus' instructions? He says, Go into the city, and immediately you will find what you're looking for. There's no left-hand turn. Oh, look, I, I pointed right. I said, There's no left-hand turn, and pointed right. This is how bad I am at directions. There's no right-hand turn, no left-hand turn, no find Paul's mother's house. It's really basic, straightforward directions. 
even a description of what you should find once you've reached your location. As someone who travels a lot and gets my fair share of directions from people, Jesus gets an A+. It's simple, it's concrete, and I know what to look for once I get there. Jesus tells the disciples they will find a donkey and a colt. Matthew reminds us that this fulfills what the prophet Zechariah said in chapter 9, verse 9 of Zechariah about the Messiah. Jesus enters the city on a colt and a donkey. This would have been unexpected for the people in the first century. Because here Matthew's story helps us understand what type of king Jesus is. He's not a mighty military king riding in on a huge imposing horse. He is humble and he comes into the city on a donkey with a colt. He rides in on animals and it requires two of them, which is a powerful reminder for those of us in the modern church. We cannot carry Christ alone. Me and Jesus doesn't cut it. We need community. We need the church. We need the church to help us carry Christ into our communities. Jesus comes into the city and is welcomed by a large crowd. And of course he's welcomed by this large crowd because just six chapters earlier in Matthew 15, he feeds a large group of people with just a couple fish and a few loaves of bread. I'm not sure what this crowd is expecting exactly, but they're excited to see Jesus. Maybe they think he'll perform another miracle and we'll all get a free meal. Maybe they think he's going to raise someone from the dead. He is a prophet after all. He's a man of miracles. And surely his arrival here in the city means good things. Regardless of why they think he's there, it goes without saying that no one, except for maybe Jesus, anticipated his death at that time. As he enters the city, they throw their coats and branches and cover the streets. This is similar to the way that people would have celebrated the return of King Solomon, a mighty warrior. And so they welcome him as a king while shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, which quite literally translated means save us. But it was used in the same way that we would say, hooray, today. It was, it was a word of exclamation, of celebration. And I can almost imagine people dancing in the streets as they welcomed their king into the city. As Jesus enters the city, those who are living in the city, the inhabitants of the city, ask, who is this? Who is this man that brings in large crowds of people? Who is this man that people are welcoming as a king into our city? Who is this man that has caused such a celebration to erupt? And as the people of the city are confused, that jubilant crowd looks back at them and answers, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus, the prophet who is great with directions. Jesus, who's being ushered into the city with joy and celebration. Jesus, who draws crowds and performs miracles. Jesus, the king the Messiah, the Christ, the one we've been waiting for. This chapter opens with Jesus giving his disciples directions. Directions on how and where to find a donkey and a colt. The disciples were obedient. They followed his directions and they found what God intended for them to find. How many of us could say the same thing? Could we say that we're obedient disciples who hear instructions from Jesus and follow them? I don't know about you, but I want to be an obedient disciple. But it's hard. It's hard to have time to be an obedient disciple when your schedule is filled with practices and recitals and work functions and aging parents to care for. It's hard to be an obedient disciple when what I want to hear from God is take it easy, get comfortable, and instead my directions from Jesus sound a little bit more like shake it up, 
Have faith that your family's gonna be okay. Trust me enough to do something you've never done before. I want to be an obedient disciple, but it isn't easy. And I think the reality is that our directions from Jesus today aren't as simple as go into the city and find a donkey and a colt. 21st century directions from Jesus sound a bit more like make sure you're honoring God by reading scripture. Be in prayer. Take time to remember that God is always with you and that the poor are among you. So feed the hungry, clothe the naked, minister to those in prison because whenever you serve the least of these, you serve me. Yes, directions from Jesus might not be as simple today as they were for the disciples who lived with Christ, but friends, you and I are modern disciples. And if we're honest with ourselves, Jesus is still speaking and giving us directions. The question is, are you willing to follow them? Sure, you might mess something up along the way, but that is just part of this wonderful and beautiful, messy thing called life. The disciples followed Jesus's instructions. They retrieved a donkey and a colt, and a city was able to erupt in celebration because of the triumphal entry of Christ. If we are faithful with much more complex and confusing directions from Jesus, what kind of impact might we be able to make in our families, in our church, and in our communities. Maybe we'll hear directions from Jesus to create a hands-free home where we set down technology every day so that our hearts and our minds and our hands can be free to spend time with family. Maybe you'll hear directions from Jesus to open a ministry for young people after school so they can get tutoring and have a safe space to hang out. Or maybe directions from Jesus to form a support group for people who are living with addiction and need the support of a community to get by. One time that I clearly remember hearing directions from Jesus was when I took a mission team to Honduras in 2013. I was a campus minister at Western Kentucky University at the time, and I took a small group to Honduras. While we were there, we went to dumps and orphanages. We spent time passing out food in the community, but we also planned to build two houses. We were in the process of building one house for a family whose house had burnt down because their teenage daughter had left a candle burning. She was burned in the fire, and so the community had rallied to make sure that this family had a home. While we were building that house, a little boy named Alan, who was eight years old, came up to us. He wanted to learn how to build a house too. And so we taught him how to swing a hammer from the shoulder, not the wrist. Amen, builders? Yeah. So we taught him how to swing a hammer and how to hit a nail. We taught him how to hold a board straight so we could cut it. And he helped us that entire day build a house for that family. During lunch break, one of the young men on our trip, Mario, came up to us and he said, Alan has asked me if you would build a house for his mother. Their house is made of nylon. We were planning on building a second house while we were in Honduras, and so we told him we would think about it. At our two o'clock water break, the kind of water break you need when you've been out all day in the Honduran sun, Mario came up to us again and was insistent. He said, Alan wants us to build his mother a house. His, her, his father left her for another woman, and their house is made of nylon. Will you come and see? And so a few of us followed Alan and Mario up the mountain to Alan's mother's house. And we found a small dilapidated structure that was made out of rotting U.S. aid tarps, tires, and old tin that had holes in it. And they kept a tarp in their house so that when it rained, they could cover their belongings with a tarp. Alan's mother emerged and we spoke with her for a little while. She told us how she had four children in addition to Alan, but she couldn't afford to feed them. So they stayed with her brothers and sisters around the city of Tegucigalpa. 
This mother was doing what countless other women just like her do every single day, making a difference in the world by providing for their families. Our mission team knew for certain that Jesus' directions were clear while we were in Honduras. None of us doubted that we should build this house once the opportunity presented itself. And sometimes that's what following directions from Jesus looks like. Faithfully taking the next step and trusting that God is at work. I doubt the disciples understood why Jesus wanted them to get a donkey and a colt from the city, but they trusted that Jesus had a plan. Be an obedient disciple. Listen for directions from Jesus. Only God knows where these directions might take you, but that is part of the fun of being a disciple. God keeps showing up in our lives, giving us different reasons and causes to celebrate being a follower of Christ. Unique and unexpected reasons to shout Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Follow the directions from Jesus and give yourself an opportunity to celebrate the way the crowds did when Jesus entered the city. Amen. The preceding presentation came from St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Oakland, Maryland.